Have you ever wondered how amperometry works? Well, you're about to find out. At its core, amperometry is an intriguing method of electrochemical analysis. In the vast universe of chemistry, it holds a significant place, helping us unlock the mysteries of chemical reactions. It's a bit like a detective, providing us with clues about what's happening in a chemical solution at a microscopic level. The secret behind its magic? It measures the current while the potential is varied. Imagine a river flowing with intensity. That's similar to the current in a chemical solution. Now imagine being able to control the river's flow, somewhat like a dam. That's what varying potential is all about. Amperometry allows us to manipulate this chemical river, giving us invaluable insights into the behavior of ions and molecules. Now that we know what amperometry is, let's delve into the theory behind it. The theory behind amperometry isn't as complicated as it sounds. This analytical tool, which measures the electric current in a solution, is rooted in Faraday's law of electrolysis. To put it in simpler terms, it's all about how an electric current can cause a chemical reaction to occur. Faraday's law of electrolysis states that the amount of substance involved in an electrochemical reaction is proportional to the total electric charge passed through the solution. Imagine a bustling city where the number of people traveling is directly related to the number of buses on the road. The more buses, the more people can travel. Similarly, in amperometry, the larger the current, the greater the quantity of substance that reacts. At the heart of amperometry is the electrode, a conductor, where the reaction occurs. When a potential difference, or voltage, is applied across electrodes immersed in a solution, current flows as a result of the reaction. This current is what amperometry measures. The beauty of this technique lies in its precision. By knowing the amount of current, we can determine the amount of substance that has reacted, thanks to Faraday's law. This is like being able to tell the exact number of passengers on a bus just by looking at the number plate. But there's more to it than just measuring current. The potential difference applied is critical, as it must be sufficient to drive the reaction. It's like ensuring there are enough buses to accommodate all passengers, too few, and people are left waiting, too many, and resources are wasted. By carefully controlling this potential difference we can selectively measure different substances in a solution. The result is a versatile tool that can analyze a wide range of chemical species from simple ions to complex organic molecules. Understanding the theory of amperometry allows us to appreciate its practical applications. From water quality testing to clinical diagnostics, this technique is making waves in various fields, proving that sometimes, a little current can go a long way. So, how does amperometry work in practice? Well, the principle of amperometry is quite simple yet fascinating. It involves the application of a potential or voltage to an electrode and then measuring the resulting current. The current is essentially a flow of electrons, and in this case, it's produced by a redox reaction occurring at the electrode surface. Now you may ask, how does this relate to the concentration of the analyte in the solution? The answer lies in the magic of chemistry. In an amperometric setup, the current is directly proportional to the concentration of the analyte, the substance we want to measure, in the solution. So, by monitoring the current flow, we can determine the concentration of our analyte. This is based on Faraday's laws of electrolysis, which state that the amount of substance consumed or produced in an electrochemical reaction is directly proportional to the quantity of electricity that passes through the system. So, in simpler terms, the more analyte we have in our solution, the higher the current that can flow through our electrode. However, it's important to note that in amperometry, we keep the applied potential constant. This ensures that the redox reaction at the electrode surface continues to occur at a steady rate. By doing this, we can make sure that any changes in the current are due to changes in the concentration of the analyte, not fluctuations in the applied potential. So, to sum up, the principle of amperometry is all about applying a potential, observing the resulting current, and using this information to determine the concentration of an analyte in a solution. It's a powerful technique that combines the principles of electricity and chemistry to give us valuable insights into the composition of a solution. With the principle in mind, we can now look at the different types of electrodes used in amperometry. Different types of electrodes can be used in amperometry. That's right, folks. Amperometry, in its essence, is a technique that measures electric current while the potential is actively controlled. The magic of this method lies in the electrodes that make this current measurement possible. Now let's dive into the world of electrodes. 
The first type of electrode we'll discuss is the dropping mercury electrode, often referred to as the DME. This electrode is a fountain of liquid mercury that continuously drops from a capillary tube. The beauty of the DME is that it provides a clean new electrode surface for each drop, which makes it exceptionally useful for detecting and measuring substances in solutions. Next up we have the Static Mercury Drop Electrode, or SMDE for short. This electrode also uses mercury but here, a single mercury drop is held static at the end of the capillary tube. The SMDE is particularly efficient for studying very slow electron transfer reactions, thanks to its static nature. Last, but certainly not least, we have the Platinum Electrodes. These electrodes are solid and robust, making them ideal for studying reactions involving gases. Moving on, let's talk about amperometric titration, another vital cog in the amperometry machine. This is a process where a titrant solution is added to the analyte, and the current is measured as a function of the volume of the titrant added. This creates a titration curve which helps us determine the concentration of the analyte. It's like a treasure map, leading us to the precious chemical information we seek. So as you can see, the different types of electrodes used in amperometry, coupled with the process of amperometric titration, play a crucial role in chemical analysis. Each electrode type brings its unique characteristic to the table, tackling different kinds of reactions and substances. Different electrodes and titration methods make amperometry a versatile tool in chemical analysis. And with that, we conclude our exploration of the fascinating world of electrodes and amperometric titration. Stay tuned for more electrifying information in the next scenes. Like any other method, amperometry has its strengths and weaknesses. Let's begin with the advantages. One of amperometry's most significant strengths is its sensitivity. It can detect minute amounts of substances, making it an excellent tool for precision analysis. This sensitivity is due to its ability to measure current, which directly corresponds to the concentration of the analyte. Furthermore, Amperometry isn't picky when it comes to the substances it can analyze. It's versatile, capable of handling a wide range of analytes, from inorganic ions to organic molecules. This adaptability makes it a go-to method for various analytical tasks. However, amperometry isn't without its challenges. For one, it requires a quiet environment. Any electrical noise can interfere with the current measurement, potentially skewing the results. This requirement can limit its use in certain settings where noise is unavoidable. Additionally, operating an amperometric system requires a certain level of skill and expertise. The operator must be well versed in the nuances of the method, including the careful control of the electrode potential and the interpretation of the current time curve. Now, let's shift gears and talk about applications. Amperometry has carved out a niche in several fields. In environmental monitoring it's used to detect pollutants and monitor water quality. In the pharmaceutical industry, it's employed to analyze drug content and impurities. And in the food industry, it's utilized for quality control, checking for contaminants, and ensuring the consistency of products. Despite its limitations, the benefits and wide applications of amperometry make it an invaluable tool in the world of chemistry. One interesting aspect of amperometry is biamperometric titration. This method is a unique variant of amperometric titration that involves not one, but two indicator electrodes. These electrodes are identical and immersed in the titration solution. The magic of biamperometric titration lies in the fact that the potential difference between these two electrodes is measured, instead of the potential difference between an indicator and a reference electrode. This technique effectively eliminates any potential error that could come from the reference electrode. Quite ingenious, wouldn't you agree? Now it's essential to note that while biamperometric titration offers this distinct advantage, it's not always the go-to method. It's typically used in scenarios where utmost accuracy is required, or when dealing with specific complex reactions. Like all methods, it's about choosing the right tool for the job. That concludes our journey into the fascinating world of amperometry. Subscribe for more because you won't find me later.